The city was a very, uh, like a virgin city. South Florida was vulnerable to penetration by drug suppliers. Florida is a drug smuggler's paradise. It was wide open back then. It was wide open. 1,200 miles of coastline, much of it remote, deserted, thousands of rivers and bays. Nobody even knows how many islands offshore. The pirates operated here in the 1700s. During the Civil War, gunrunners would run the Union blockade in from the Bahamas. Rum runners used the same technique. This city has always had something coming in. In the 1960s, this was a jumping off place for soldiers of fortune who ran commando raids into Cuba. Several dozen miles southwest of Miami is a military training camp located on 40 miles of Everglades swampland for Cuban refugees who are planning to return to the island to fight. These guys had been trained by the CIA, had gone into the fishing industry, and they were making a very good living. The change in 1975 was precipitated by a lobster. There was a law change in the Bahamas which prohibited Cuban exiles based in Miami from fishing in Bahamian waters for the spiny lobster. It put out of work a tremendous amount of fishermen. Ovidio Perez sold his gold watch and ring last week to feed his two children. He expects the bank to foreclose on this boat before months end. Francisco Gatto's boat is taking on water from lack of use. He says it might sink before his next payment. More than 1,000 other lobster fishermen, the majority of them Cuban exiles, have not left these docks in six weeks. They had their boats, they had their knowledge, they had their training. That's when we started seeing the mother load method of transporting marijuana. The fishermen were acting as intermediaries, and the go-fast boats were bringing them into the coast. And at that time, everybody in Florida was smuggling pot in. When you could drive in with a boat, stacked up, pull up to a dock and unload it, nobody said a thing. There was no defense of the border to speak of. There are thousands of fishing boats in this area, hundreds of thousands of pleasure boats, many of them capable of the run to the Bahamas or to a mothership on a marijuana delivery cruise out in the Gulf Stream. If they thought there was a problem, they'd just throw it overboard. They would order 40,000 pounds and they'd send up 50,000 and they'd only have enough boats to carry the 40 and they would throw the stuff away. You, you could be out in a boat and find bales of marijuana floating, the proverbial square grouper. You would get guys that would go over and load the ship and they would get their dentist or their attorney or their doctor because forevermore he could tell his grandchildren that, you know, I was a smuggler. South Florida has become the drug smuggling capital of the United States. No other place in the country even comes close.